Who would have thought that one of the most debated subjects by historians and archaeologists involves the domestication of horses? That's right, for quite a while now people have argued as to when humans began to domesticate wild horses. Better yet, many historians to this day argue about what time period the first horseback riders came from and what their reasoning behind learning to do so was. As of right now, there are two different arguments, both of which claim that riding on horseback became more common more than 4,000 years ago, with some people believing it dates as far back as 4,000 BC. The only thing that most people can agree on is the fact that horses before being domesticated were primarily hunted and even herded because they were a good source of food and material. The main source of evidence behind this comes from carvings and even cave paintings that date back as far as 15,000 BC that is now known as the Lascaux cave paintings. The paintings show animals that are clearly wild horses, none of which are wearing any sort of harnesses or anything that would possibly indicate that they were domesticated as far as back then. In fact, the first depictions of horses while people riding atop them didn't appear until much closer to 2000 BC, but we will get into that later on in the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Now, like most animals who have been domesticated, the way the horses look today is very different from the way that wild horses look before humans were able to do things like selective breeding and other manipulations to the gene pool. Archaeological evidence tells us that before being domesticated, wild horses had shorter legs along with large round stomachs. On top of that, their heads tended to be much larger in comparison to their body, and they most likely had manes that stood upright. In terms of proportions, it's believed that before domestication, Wild horses were typically around 5 feet tall and 5 feet long, and the most likely weighed upwards of 700 pounds. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and make sure you subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss a single upload. One of the first things that we should look at is why settlements would want or possibly even need to domesticate horses. The most widely believed purpose behind this was simply because horses made a reliable, resilient, and plentiful source of food and other raw materials. Unlike other animals such as cattle or sheep, Horses had adapted and evolved to be able to not only live, but thrive in colder and harsher environments. Their bodies have adapted to withstand the cold, and they were also still able to get their own food, which is what set them apart from other food sources like cattle. You see, the settlement would have to provide the cattle with food during the winter, but horses on the other hand had learned to use their hooves to scratch through layers of ice and snow so that they could get to the grass underneath. This meant that once humans learned how to herd animals and applied that to horses, all a settlement would have to do was herd a large group of horses into a small valley, where they would then cut them off from the rest of the world. The horses would survive there, and the humans would use them as a source of food and raw materials whenever they needed to do so. This herding process has also led archaeologists to find massive dig sites that were filled with various animal bones. But what's really interesting is that in some of the sites, more than 99% of the bones belong to horses. This brings us to our first argument which has primarily been based on archaeological and osteological studies. For a while, and arguably to this day, it's been nearly impossible to determine whether or not a horse has been ridden based on the state of its remains. You can find out a lot about an animal or a human based on the condition of their bones, such as their eating habits, their breeding habits, and a whole lot more. One thing that has never been apparent in the remains of horses, though, is whether or not they have been ridden. This doesn't appear to have any effect on their bones. At least, that's what a lot of people believe. In the early 2000s, this all changed when a study was performed on the remains of horses dating back to around 4000 BC that was found in an area known as the Great Steppes, specifically in a settlement known as Botai, located in modern-day Kazakhstan. The study specifically looked at the teeth of the horses found at the dig site in that area. What they were looking for was markings on the inside of the horse's teeth that would indicate that they had been biting down on the bit that is used in harnesses. The bit is the section of the harness that goes through the mouth of the horse, and it was believed that from biting down on this bit for a long period of time, the horse's teeth have some sort of indentation. As it would turn out, the researchers discovered that there were what they believed to be the exact indents on the teeth that they had been looking for. This study has led some researchers to believe that the first ridden horses could have come from Botai, sometime between 3700 and 3000 BC. These dates also lined up with the increased amount of horse remains that had been found in dig sites throughout Eurasia. After learning how to ride the horses, it was much easier for traders, hunters, and sometimes entire settlements to move, which led to an increase in the spread of both humans and horses across the land. As we said, most of the dig sites that date back to that period tend to contain a ton of animal remains, most of which ended up being horses. And much like the horse remains found in the Bowtie site, 
these horses had bit marks on their teeth. Ironically enough, it's believed that the majority of the horse riders back then were hunters who would use the horses to help them hunt other wild horses for their meat. Some historians believe that this entire theory was proven false and essentially debunked as they believe the indentations found on the horse's teeth throughout these regions were simply due to an evolutionary variant. In a similar context, it was then theorized that the first horse riders dated back to sometime between 4500 and 3500 BC in an area known as the Serendi Stock, specifically in an area that was formerly a settlement known as Darivka. There was an archaeological dig that exposed a very large amount of horse remains. Though the number wasn't quite as high as those found in the Botai dig site, out of all the remains found in Derivka, 63% of them belonged to horses. Archaeologists also discovered artifacts at the dig site that were believed to be the portion of the horse harnesses that go near the cheek and attached to the bit that goes in their mouth. The artifacts were carved out of antlers and were also found in other portions of the western steppe. This also coincides with the discovery that it was around this time period the settlements all around the steppe suddenly became involved in trade, which would have been made more likely thanks to an increased mobility pattern, which would have been thanks to their newfound form of transportation. Now this isn't the only argument though. There is still a large group of historians, scientists, and archaeologists that believe riding on horseback didn't come around until the invention of the chariot which was sometime around 2000 BC. They also believe that there is no real evidence to support that settlements began riding on horses any earlier than this. We mentioned before that there is no direct way for an archaeologist to determine whether or not a horse has been ridden. Therefore, any speculation based on the horse's teeth hasn't necessarily been proven to be related to a bit from a harness. As for the artifacts discovered in the Derivka dig site that were believed to be sections of the harness made from antlers, that is simply speculation. Other historians believe that the artifacts were actually tools made out of antlers instead of sections of a harness. As for the massive amount of horse remains found in dig sites near ancient settlements, most historians believe that the horses were simply herded into those areas so that they could be harvested for their milk and meat, since they were hardier animals than most cattle. According to most historians that have studied early horse riders, the only true evidence would come from images that were found, whether it be cave paintings or engravings. As it stands, the earliest depictions of humans riding on the backs of horses were found in Mesopotamia around the year 2000 BC. These engravings and carvings showed people on horseback riding for what appears to be a sport or hunting. On top of that, these paintings depicted the horses being controlled by a rope that had been attached to a ring through the horse's nose, not by a harness with a bit of attachment. Now as we said, this is a subject that to this day is still debated and no one knows the real answer as to who the first people were to domesticate and ride horses. Which of these two arguments do you agree with more though? The Great Steppe Hypothesis or the Mesopotamia Hypothesis? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and make sure you subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss a single upload.